Hi everybody, um, I'm on video. I don't know why, the way I have the phone, it makes it look like I'm staring off to the side, but I'm looking straight at the, uh, the phone. Anyway, so I'm on, uh, I'm on video, and I'm gonna be on video, I'm gonna do a few more videos, so that I can wrap up my business in the transportation industry and move the fuck on. Um... Real quick, my story, and I'm going to tell you, give you a little more background in another video, but basically, I'm a career displaced horse trainer. I moved to Phoenix, Arizona from Westchester County, New York in 1989, and at that time, I got hired, Tom Chauncey hired me, Wayne Newton hired me, no place to go, no place to move up. Um, things didn't work out, uh, basically I became career displaced, and I ended up, I ended up driving for a living when I was getting evicted with my 18 month old child. Um, and what driving did for me was I had an apartment, I was in a permanent car, a nice car with an owner operator on a regular shift. I didn't have to go, you know, um, go to the cage every day and pick up a random car that who knows what. Um, and I had bought a little Toyota for 600 bucks to get around because I was bussing it. Um, you know, to go pick up my cab and drop my child off at daycare and so on and so forth. Okay. Not to mention the fact that when I got out there on the street, the other drivers became the realest and best friends that I ever had in my life. And I met a lot of people. I couldn't wait to go out to work. I loved my job. If I could not ride eight horses a day, driving eight horses was just fine. Um... You know, and I started making more money than I, um, than I had made, uh, than I was back east as I was working my way up the ladder. And when I was back east, I got to the top of my game. And I was the highest paid equine livestock manager slash groom slash exercise rider slash injury and rehab specialist, um, in... Westchester and Fairfield County. Um, and then, you know, I think, oh, I'll come out here because, you know, my long-term career goals, I, I want to get into Arabian sport horses, go to Scottsdale. <laughs> Disaster. All those horse farms are gone now. I live out on Bell Road, and I watch them all become subdivisions. Um, all right, so anyway, this video is about... Um, well, you know what, how about let's just uh, leave it at for purposes of um, just a little background so you guys can look at a quick video and then move on to the other ones uh, and get right to the point. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, I I'll go on with a little bit more of the story. Um, okay. So, basically, uh, over the years, I drove, I did MLMs, and I worked in uh, direct sales of business ops on the corporate side as well, okay? And I actually worked for the dude that is behind all the infomercials for biz ops that you see on TV, like Carlton Sheets and Dave Espino and yada yada, and of course the king, Don LaPree, um, and I work for those guys, and I know what the inside scoop is, because they created the pitch and the business model that every single internet business is modeled after today, and they taught people how to close, and the sale is all about what they don't know and you don't tell them. In other words, what they don't think to ask 
and you don't tell them. And it was the same with Uber and Lyft recruiters. Thank you very much. The reason that I did not go forward with a YouTube channel when I started driving for Uber and Lyft is because my truce could not compete against their lies. Who's going to sign up to drive if I'm telling you, look, you got to work 12-hour shifts. You got to put 300 bucks away in the bank for your vehicle expenses every week. You need to pay your own company. You need to sock that money away because your car, you need to pay your business expenses first. And this industry is not a gig job. This is a business. Yes, Uber and Lyft took away your independence as a business owner because you are not no longer paying the label for your customers. In other words, you're not paying the label anymore to get you your customers. The label is paying you to deal with their customers and also as we know to do their dirty work when it comes to minors and car seats and all that shit because you see they don't have anything against a minor's money or a kid not in a car seat parents money they'll take the money but if you but if something happens then because of the way their policies are written they can blame it on the driver and get off the hook okay so anyway um I, I, this industry is the same sewer, different toilets. The toilets are now pink and blue. They used to be yellow and green in Phoenix, Arizona, anyway. Um, uh, what was the last thing I wanted to say? Okay, yeah. So, the last thing I wanted to say is the reason drivers don't make money is because... When Kalanick came up with this brilliant uh, dispatch system and idea and how to make transportation, private, tra well, private transportation, that's really public transportation, um, so accessible, <laughs> he had no idea about the industry, nor did he have any idea that he left two million dollars a year on the table just from one one of the cab companies he killed here in phoenix because these people know nothing about this industry and the reason they can't pay us and the reason that they're not profitable is because they left 80 percent of the industry income on the table um and i'm gonna tell you um you don't have to listen to me Okay, I, I, um, if you want to learn what that money is that they left on the table, go talk to the rideshare professor because he knows. Um, anyway, uh, so this part of the industry, I just did the math real quick and, and they, <laughs> they, uh, they left over $2 million a year in lease money on the table that the biggest company in town that they killed um was bringing in and i'll tell you what all of those cars that were on discount cabs fleet have been repainted and they are all uber and lyft cars now <laughs> um and those people that own those vehicles are still making around 300 a week on them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A Toyota Prius costs four cents a mile to maintain. Um, my friend who has seven cars and 11 drivers uh, is very clear of that. Um, but anyway, okay, so this video is getting on 10 minutes. Um, we're starting to... Uh, get some information out here um you know basically the reason that i am wrapping up my business is because it's out of hand it, all the gossip is out of hand 
Um, the whole industry is a disaster. Uh, this whole thing with the wages. If you are not making your money, you're not out there running a business. You know, you, you want to open a restaurant? You think you're going to be working less than 60 hours. Think again. Um, yeah. Y you know, now because these people want... They, the, these new generation drivers that are protesting wages, they want to know where, when... How many, how much, and last but not least, wait for me. They want the surge to wait for them. I got news for you people. Customers don't show up when it's convenient for drivers. Customers show up when they need a ride on their time. Alrighty, okay. Uh, the next video is going to be about what a Lyft Hub employee told me last week when I went in there and asked them, why can't I call customer service anymore? <laughs>